Hey, y'all. Happy Sunday morning to you. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. And hope that uh, everything is going well. So, <laughs> uh, let me uh, start off by saying welcome to uh, live Q&A number seven. And uh, in this one, we're going to be talking about the double-sided machining that we did um, last week when we designed the project. And then this week where we actually went out and cut the project. Uh, let me start off by saying howdy to some folks out here on the live chat. Uh, Steve from Harneal Media, webmaster to the, to the stars. Everybody who's anybody has a website through him. He will hook you up. Uh, David Kraus is here. Thomas Grimm. Um, David Noonan. Chad M. And Kevin Ells. Joni Jensen. Hi, good to see you. And Richard Polin. And MacTech 007 from Ontario, Canada. Oh, Bobby Orr has designed, has decided to come in and check us out. Loved your work on the uh, hockey rink, my friend. No, I know, not you. <laughs> Alan Prince has chimed in as well. Good to see y'all. Thomas Grimm says, you were awfully self-assured to cut it the first time on good wood. Uh, that was not the first time. Um, believe me, I full... I heartily endorse cutting in scrap. I played around with some chunks of uh, MDF and got everything figured out on my first couple three. Uh, I did not show any of my test cuts. They all came out okay, but um, there's no need to show the tests. I mean, it's this subject. I'll go ahead and get into it. This subject is looks super super intimidating and folks um they don't want to take it on for the first time because they are just absolutely certain that it's going to be a, a train wreck but it's not as difficult as it first appears it looks confusing as heck but it's not as difficult as it first appears the main things to remember are remember which direction you're flipping your dowel holes and setting your X and Y zero. And probably the number one thing that people get confused on is resetting X and Y zero. And the simple matter is you don't reset X and Y zero at all. Now, I contributed to some, to some confusion inadvertently when in the very first video on this subject, uh, let me go ahead and uh, bring up Aspire here and screen share. Um, make sure that I am sharing here and I'm not. There I am. Now I'm sharing, I think. Uh, yeah, okay. When I first... Let me get rid of that. Whoops. Now I messed that up. Reload my uh, file here. Okay. When I first uh, demonstrated the tool paths, I cut the dowel holes on the top then when I switched over to the bottom, I cut the dowel holes and demonstrated that as well. If I go back over to the top and I'll preview that toolpath. Okay, I cut my dowel holes. Then I went over to the bottom and I demonstrated that dowel hole toolpath. It cut all the way through the material. And that confused a lot of folks. I should not have done that. So I had a lot of questions on that. Wait a minute, you're confusing me. How do I get these dowel holes placed in everything? These, the dowel hole toolpaths are not, not 
cut all the way through the material. I got the tool path highlighted here. They were only cut a half of an inch deep into the, in my case, my piece of Kamani wood. They're cut a half inch deep into the Kamani. Then on the bottom, the dowel holes that I cut into the spoil board are also cut a half inch deep. So I'm not cutting all the way through my workpiece here. All I'm doing is I'm cutting a hole in, I'm cutting the locating holes in the top of the material here and then corresponding holes in the spoil board here. So I hope that um, clears up any confusion. It, um, it created more confusion, I think, than it, w it was meant, than it ever cleared up. So, and the reason, the, the other question I get on this is, why did you kind of make those dowel holes just kind of place them wherever you wanted them? And why did you only use two? The reason for that is I wanted it to only be able to fit together one way. So if I were to do four dowel holes, for example, I could put it on upside down. I could put it on backwards. But by putting two holes on opposite corners and then making those corresponding holes in the spoil board, it would only fit together one way. That makes it Murphy-proof. And if I can find a way to mess it up, I will. So by making it only fit together one way, I knew my X and Y zero would be correct, and I knew my all of my locations would be correct. So let's go over here and see what's going on in the chat. Oh, hello, Jose Rodriguez from Brazil. Wow, thank you. Um, let's see, David White, the best scrap is solid surface out of the fabricator's trash bin, free and works like wood without the dust. I've not yet cut any solid surface material, but I really want to. And the solid surface material, uh, the solid surface countertop shops around here, they save all that stuff. <laughs> I mean, about all you're going to find for uh, in their trash is little bitty chunks. They sell all of it. Okay, uh, Richard Weiss, why would it make a difference if you made the location holes all the way through on your project? The main difference is it would be able to go together. I, well, I guess you really wouldn't. Um, yeah, I guess you really couldn't put it uh, down the wrong way. It's just, you know, not un, un, it's just unnecessary. You know, I... I don't know. I guess you could drill it all the way through. It's just to me, I figure I go a half inch into my workpiece and then a half inch into my um, auxiliary spoil board and it works for me. So if you're only using a couple of those locating dowels, then yeah, I guess you're, uh, I guess you could drill all the way through. I just decided not to. So. Um, Patrick's Workshop, how you doing, my friend? Let's see, Jill Knight, howdy from Texas, howdy from Oregon. Uh, 3D is CNC, hi, Mark, you're the number one CNC how-to on YouTube. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, Titans of CNC have got me smoked. I'm just a little fish in a very, very big pond, but thank you very much. Uh, let's see, smaller the dowels, the higher the precision, use one-eighth, one-sixteenth metal pins better. Um, I haven't found a need for that, to be honest with you. I went with quarter-inch dowel, mainly because I've got quarter-inch dowel hanging around here. Um, I have seen people use half-inch dowel, I've seen people use three-eighths dowel. Uh, I don't really think that that matters, because that's, the dowel isn't there to fasten or hold down the workpiece. It's just there to locate it. You're going to use some other type of uh, method of attaching 
your workpiece to the spoil board, be that, uh, you know, clamps or screws or even the CA and uh, tape method. And uh, the main reason I didn't use CA and tape on this was because this was my first time in carving this particular material, this Kamani wood. And um, I knew it was hard. I knew it was dense, but I didn't know how it was going to react to machining. So I figured let's just screw it down and be done with it. But now that I know a little bit more about it, and I'm in love with this stuff. I really wish I could get more. But, um, yeah, the dowels are just basically there to locate. So, let's see. Um, Alan Prince says, I need to do a double-sided job where the material will be 44 millimeters thick. Can you see any problems with this? Only that you need to make sure that the cutting length on your bit is enough to handle that. You know, uh, I don't know how far you plan on cutting through on either side, if you're going to be cutting all the way through it anywhere, as a matter of fact. But, you know, and I'm going to claim ignorance here. I'm going to need to uh, uh, check it out. Yeah, that's almost an inch and three quarters. Sorry, I'm an, I'm, I'm an Imperial System user. That's almost an inch and three quarter thick. You need to be able to make sure that um, your cutting edge is long enough to handle that thick of a project. And this is where making sure you have your router or spindle trammed as perfectly as you can get it. Because if it's off just slightly, either in, um, you know, uh, tilt or in nod, if it's off slightly, if you cut halfway through, I see now you said you plan to cut halfway from both sides. If it's off slightly and that bit, for example, is turned this way and you cut through the top, flip it over and then cut through again, your cuts aren't going to match up. It's going to be kind of tapered on one edge and then, you know, off the other way on the other edge. So um, get that spindle or router trammed as perfectly as you can and um, you know just make sure your cutting depth of your bit can handle it because don't ask me how I know this if you try to cut deeper than the cutting length on your bit as soon as that bit gets to a portion it cut, starts cutting deep enough where there's no cutting edge there one of three things will happen. You'll either snap the bit, burn the edge of the material, or a combination of the two. And if you're like me, you'll do it a couple of times. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Patrick's Workshop. I think I use 716 dowel just because I have it in stock. Yeah, that was the same with me. That's why I went with quarter inch, because I have a bunch of it. And I just, like I said, I, I drilled my locating holes a half inch into the spoil board and a half inch into the material. And then I cut the pieces of dowel about seven eighths, just a little bit less than an inch. So it had a little bit of a gap there in case something fell down in there. So because you want to be able to get that surface flat on that spoil board and not have a dowel sticking up, holding it up in one corner or something. So, uh, Patrick's workshop also, I've done a thick double-sided project that was too thick for one side to do a profile cut. So I did halfway from both sides, leaving the tab in the center. Well, that kind of doves in, uh, dovetails in with Alan Prince's next question. Will the tab function still work? Yes, but you have to be creative with where you put those tabs and specifically on the thickness. Now, there was one shot in today's video where, and I have to claim, this was 100% my fault, uh, but there was nothing I could do about it. I didn't discover it until after the fact. When I finished the project and picked it up off of the spoil board, I had forgotten how close I had zoomed in on 
the project while it was on the spoil board. So when I lifted it up and I'm talking about how the tabs had held, you couldn't see it. So, but the tabs did hold. I had cut that, um, that bevel, that uh, chamfer around the edge. And then I had cut that to a flat depth of an eighth of an inch. So with that material gone, I had to add an eighth of an inch to the thickness of my tabs so that I would have a good quarter inch thick tab holding those uh, pieces in place. So in your case, Alan, if you were going to, let's see, you're cutting 44 millimeters thick, um, I would probably tend to make those tabs you you want at least probably about six and a half millimeter thick tabs I don't know what you normally do but depending upon where you want those tabs placed and um, what type of material it is uh, you know whether it be plywood or uh, a, a solid wood uh, you might have to on one side, you know, go ahead and carve halfway through, but add the thickness of the material you're going to remove. I don't know if I'm just confusing you or what, but you want a, at least a six and a half, probably six, six and a half millimeter thick tab somewhere close to the center. So I don't know if that made any sense or not. But, uh, see, David White, any changes in V-Carve 10 installing after the show? Um, in, uh, it, well, it depends on which version you're uh, upgrading from, but the short answer is, yes, there are a lot of changes. The long answer is, oh, boy, are there ever a lot of changes, mainly to the tool database. And I don't know if you saw, I believe it was Q&A number six, five and six. There were, uh, I went through a bunch of the differences and a bunch of the um, upgrades in the upgrade. And uh, mainly in the tool databases where they did a lot of changes. But they did some changes in other things as well. But... Uh, if you want to go refer back to, I think it was uh, number five and six. I had to put them together because I had a technical problem the week before. But uh, I, I talked a lot about the uh, difference between version 9.5 and version 10. And to me, if, if you should have to pay for it, to me it's worth it. If you get the free upgrade, by all means do it. Do it. Don't hesitate. So... Let's see, uh, it would be easiest to put the whole tab on one side. Okay, it would be easiest to put the whole tab on one wide to the split line uh, from Thomas Grimm. Uh, yeah, that's kind of sort of what I was getting at. The thing to remember is, is if you, and believe me, I did this once on a piece of MDF, thankfully, um, uh, on one side of the profile split line. Yes, I I got it, uh, Thomas. I did it with a piece of MDF. I made my tabs and thought everything was great. Then when I flipped over the uh, the project, it promptly cut those tabs away. And I'm like, oh, geez, you're supposed to get them placed in the center. So the easiest way I figured to do it is put the tabs on one side, but make up compensate for the material you're going to remove from the other side so that's why i made them as thick as i did in the project when we designed it last week hopefully that makes sense so um i just getting into double-sided machining i would advise to do a couple of simple projects in scrap first i mean you can, generally speaking, find scrap wood just about anywhere. Um, as I've said before, I got on Craigslist and went into the free section and found a few people giving away fence boards, and I've still got a stack of fence boards outside. I figure it's better to, you know, cut up something that's destined for the landfill 
and keep it out of the landfill. And you never know. Your first one might be an absolute success. But yeah, free material that's destined for the landfill is the perfect material to practice on. And do a couple of projects. I mean, um, that's one reason why these jar lids were almost the perfect first project because you're doing a, a kind of a dish on one side and I threw in some V-carving just because then you're cutting out a pocket on the other side then cutting out the profile. That will show you whether or not you're getting your alignment right and whether you're getting everything placed on the spoil board where it needs to be placed. And it's, it's a real simple project. And I made these for my wife for her. <laughs> I don't know if the epoxy was dry yet. She was putting tea in the jars. And um, she just started rat She just started going down the list. You know, somebody, this person would like them for Christmas and that person would like them for Christmas. And you could do other tops on them and things like that. It's a real quick, simple project. And it's not something that I would have thought of if I hadn't seen Robert Brown cut some for his wife uh, for the candles that she makes. So, see, Richard Weiss says, after watching YouTube videos, I was able to complete the cribbage board lid that Becky from Vectric demo. Yeah, um, the Vectric tutorials are excellent. And that's where I learned probably two-thirds of what I know how to do. And I don't know. They have to cater to every skill level. They have to try to instruct the beginner, but they also have to instruct the pros that have been using software forever and just need help with where are the tools or maybe have not done a certain technique. So they can't take the time to break it down and go through it step by step, whereas I can. I'm trying to do things for the person who's never done anything like this before and is intimidated by the whole process because five years ago, I was that guy. You know, I knew I could build a CNC. Okay, now you've got it. Now what? Oh, boy. So I was that guy, and so I try to anticipate the questions that I had without trying to talk down to anybody. That's the last thing on my mind. But definitely get into those Vectric tutorials and check them out. I mean, a lot of hay is made about their accents, and I don't know, I watch a lot of British sitcoms, Monty Python and Faulty Towers and things of that nature, I've never had a problem with the accents. I think they're actually pretty benign, but I don't know. Some people don't agree with me. But do remember, there is closed captions, so if you're not sure of what they're saying, hit that little closed caption symbol. And in fact, I closed caption all of my videos because I know we have people in other countries who English is not their first language. They can use those closed captions to kind of help translate something that I don't make clear. <laughs> so, Joni Jensen, it makes me want to start canning again. Well, so long as you remember that these don't go in like the dishwasher and they sure don't go in a water bath. These are for after everything is already canned and sealed. <laughs> so, uh, hi, Mark. Greetings from Ireland. Well, greetings from the U.S. And your videos are very helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that name because I will butcher it and upset everybody. Uh, Richard Weiss, after watching both your videos, I was okay. Yeah, I'm talking about the cribbage board. I have yet to make a cribbage board, and I really need to. Um, and talking about the version 10 upgrade, let me throw something at you that maybe a lot of folks don't know. I, I know a lot of you... Um, are in Facebook groups that I'm in as well. I've interacted with quite a few of you, as a matter of fact. Here's a little secret. I know for a fact that there are Vectric employees that are in that group too. 
or well, I mean, a couple of the groups. And in fact, in one group, the person who has designed every free monthly project from Vectric that you've ever cut, like the Paradise Box or something like that, the person who creates those designs is a member. So they are watching what people are doing and what people are asking for. So cribbage boards are huge. People love cribbage boards. So one of the upgrades they did was they just added a bunch of cribbage board patterns. So if you have the version 10 down in the 2D clip art, you'll find three cribbage board patterns. One is an oval, one is a circle, and one is a rectangular pattern. It's the layout of all of the holes that you'll need for a cribbage board with space to add your own artwork. So you could technically load up a piece of material on your uh, in your job setup, import that uh, cribbage board layout, and then go straight into the clip art and put something like an eagle in it, and there's your first cribbage board project. Be very simple to do. So just food for thought. They are watching. They are looking at what folks are doing, what you're making, and if they can help, they'll put it in there. If they can, you know, accommodate or come up with artwork or something like that, they'll put it in there. So, let's see. Um, let's see. Alan Prince. I didn't know you were in the UK, Alan. I'm going to the Vectric HQ on Wednesday for the user group meeting. Really looking forward to it. Well, say hello to Becky and Stephanie from Mark Lindsay. Uh, Stephanie Dowling and Stephanie Downing. There's two of them there. They're all super people. Everybody I've ever interacted with over at Vectric has really been, really been decent. So I'd, I'd love to go to the user group meeting in Denver, Colorado this year. It's just not in the travel budget. So, hmm. so oh, and it's not us that talks funny. It's you all across the pond. I... I don't know. I talk funny. I know that. That's because of it's me. <laughs> but I don't know. Okay, Patrick's Workshop. Do you have another double-sided project coming up? I might. And a little bit of foreshadowing here. Well, as a matter of fact, I know I have one coming up that's going to be actually simpler than the one we just did. But um, that won't be until after the new year because it's going to be a Christmas present for somebody. And it's just going to be a quick and easy one to show that show how you can do something that you wouldn't think you could do on a uh, on on a two D, you know, on a three axis CNC. So I and I I can't go any further than that simply because I don't want to spoil the gift. So, but yes, I do have another one coming up for sure, and I'm thinking about combining it with. Uh, I may be shooting myself in the foot by saying this. I'm thinking seriously about doing a two-sided project that also needs tiling. But that's still kind of in the engineering process up here. Not quite ready yet. So we'll see. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Dathom Dathomore? Okay, I'm, I probably just butchered that name. Any advice on 3D carving into a rectangle piece stock? I want to cut a smaller rectangle piece from the center of the original stock and include a slanted section on half of the base. Not really following you. I would have to see a picture of what you're trying to do. Um, uh, I'd, I'd probably have to see what you're talking about to, to wrap my head around it. Okay, John DeRoos, have you ever tried carving on snake wood? No, I haven't. I haven't. It's just not something that's come up yet. Um, I do like tiger wood. Um, I, I've heard of snake wood, but I'm, I'm not real... I don't know. I'm not real sure. I'm not real up on a lot of the uh, what we would consider exotics, but uh, it's just, you know, um, pr 
proximity and availability. I just haven't had occasion to use it. So let's see, going 4D? No, not yet. <laughs> uh, is anyone else going to the Vectric user group next? next week in Denver. I wish I was going. I'd love to go. I'd really love to go. Uh, Mahoy Manoy, what is the meaning of life? 42. Uh, Tiger Wood, also a great golfer. Meh. I don't know. I don't, I don't follow golf at all. I mean, you know, what can you say? Okay, are there any other questions? Did I clear up any confusion or did I just create more? Um, the main things to remember is place your dowel locating holes on the top surface of your material during the design process, then immediately copy them to the other side. Then they will be in the right place. For the top, drill those dowel holes in the material that you're cutting. For the bottom, drill those into your spoil board. And once you set your X and Y zero, don't reset it. Don't change it. That's what those dowel holes are for. They're to locate the piece of material where you need it. So once those X and Y zeros are set, that's it. The only thing you'll need to change is your Z zero. So speaking of changing Z zero, I'm going to include in the next project I cut out a fellow that I was talking with in one of the Facebook groups gave me an idea, and I'm kind of playing with it to make sure that it works. But I may have a new way of accurately setting Z0 for those of you who don't have a uh, touch plate. So, okay, I don't see any further question. Well, there is one here. Uh, Joni Jensen, dowel size. If you use quarter inch for size, do your dowel fit? Dowels fit. Are you, I guess you're, you're talking about the uh, the um, your end mill that you drill with. Uh, mine did. Uh, hardwood dowels are usually just slightly undersized, so it slipped right in nicely. It wasn't a press fit, but uh, it wasn't anything I had to hammer in. They just slipped in nicely. But, you know, again, test on a couple of pieces of scrap. I mean, you know, you can... Just uh, drill a couple of holes in a piece of scrap and just see how they work. And if they're a little bit loose or a little bit, uh, if they're a little bit loose or a little bit tight, kind of adjust. But um, a hardwood dowel, quarter inch hardwood dowel is not exactly a quarter of an inch. It's slightly undersized. So, uh, David White, exactly. And that's called foreshadowing. <laughs> uh, Richard Poland, your explanation are always very clear thanks well I don't know about that David I appreciate the vote of confidence but about um, I don't know a good portion of the time I confuse myself that's why I always ask did I just I hope that makes sense or did I just uh, create more confusion so the uh, the bottom line is uh, practice it get out you know, draw up a couple of uh, simple projects, go out with some scrap and, uh, you know, cut them. And if they, uh, if they don't work out for you, you know what they say. If at first you don't succeed, eliminate any evidence of the attempt and just try again. So, okay, I added the eliminate any evidence of the attempt part, so... Okay, Alan Prince, everything covered. Thanks for all the effort you put in to help us, and I will try to say hi when at Vectric. Thank you for that, Alan. I mean, you know, I really do appreciate all the support, and I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge. I wanted to say thank you to everybody, all you guys here in the chat, and those of you who are watching this later on. I want to say thank you to everybody. Um, I just hit a subscriber milestone. Um, a couple of days ago, I went over 10,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel. And I got to tell you, nobody, nobody is more surprised, shocked, amazed about that than I am. 
Um, I started out doing this to help the folks who were asking questions and I just happened to know an answer and thought I could help because it was easier to show in a video than it was to try to describe it in text. I never thought it would, you know, blow up to something like this. Now, I know in the great grand scheme of things, 10,000 subscribers isn't anything, but it's absolutely amazing to me that that many people give enough of a ding dong about anything that I've ever said. So, um, it's just amazing to me and it's all you guys. Thank you very, very much. Um, I don't have a giveaway yet. I'm going to do a giveaway. I'm working on a couple of things behind the scenes. I'm waiting for people to get back to me and hopefully make it a good one, make it worthwhile. Um, but You'll know when I announce, but I do plan on getting, doing a giveaway. And thank you for the congratulations there. Do I have uh, do I have any experience using a drag knife on CNC? No, I don't. I have also heard the Donek is real good. Um, I'm just Scottish enough to where that kind of money makes me kind of wince a little bit. But eventually I am going to go ahead and try a drag knife but no as of as of right now i've not tried a drag knife but okay well thank you very much for the congratulations on the 10k guys i really do appreciate it it's 100 percent you folks that do it i thank you very sincerely it still just kind of blows me away and we'll go ahead and we'll end this now if, remember, if you have any questions after this goes live, go ahead and put them down in the comment section or hit me through my uh, website. And uh, other than that, get out in the shop, make some chips, do a couple of uh, double-sided projects. And um, again, like always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Y'all take care.